What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. In this video, I'm going to be going through every single product that I have tried that I own from Shantakai, one of our favorite brands. I'm going to be ranking them, letting you guys know what I think is good, what I think is less good. So if you guys are interested in hearing all of my thoughts and kind of like a little mini speed reviews about each of the products, then keep watching. And if you are new here, maybe you found me in the YouTube browse or a Google search, then welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia and this is my channel where we talk about all things beauty and luxury. I have low content every single week on all the newest luxury beauty releases. We really love Shanta Kai on this channel. We also love Dior, Chanel, Tom Ford, Suku, Pat McGrath, you name it. So if you want to join the fam because we have so, so much fun over here on this channel, then hit that subscribe button and you can also hit the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. If you guys like ranking videos, if you like Shanta Kai, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And of course, I will link everything that I mentioned in this video in the description box down below along with the different shades that I use or the ones that I mentioned in this video. A lot of my links are affiliate links, so when you shop through those, it's a really great way to support my channel. Thank you so, so much. And it costs you nothing extra. All right, guys, let's get into this ranking. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time, and I thought this would be a great time because the Shantakai Sylvie sale is actually going on right now. I don't receive PR from Shantakai. I don't have a code for you guys, but there are a lot of codes kind of going around YouTube right now with lots of Shantakai recommendations. So I wanted to come to the table, give you guys all of my thoughts about their products. I have haven't worked with the brand to date, so I'm going to be super honest with you guys. All of these products I purchased with my own money, either on the Shantikai website or at other sort of like department store retailers. So let's get into it. Oh, I'll also mention I'm going to be showing you guys clips of me applying all of these products to my face. I do film in natural light, so what you guys are seeing is exactly or as close to what these products look like in real life. I don't have any big studio lights. I just have a little ring light and a huge window in front of me. So you guys are going to see me applying these as we go. We're going to be going from what I think are the worst products that I've tried from Shantikai to the best products that I've tried from Shantikai. And don't get mad guys if you disagree. If you disagree, I would love to hear your comments down below. This is just my personal preference and I'll kind of be explaining why maybe I rank some things higher than others. And honestly guys, I don't think there's any like horrible products here. It's just sometimes there's some products that are more worth the money than others. So starting off with the worst products that I've tried from Shantikai, some of you are gonna get really mad at this. It's their eyeshadow singles. These are the luminescent eye shades. They have a whole collection of these. I wanna say they have like maybe eight to 10 of these so far. And these are eyeshadow singles. Let me show you guys the ones that I have today. I have the Lion, which is kind of like a bronze shade. It does have a really beautiful embossing. And then I also have the one that I'm wearing today, which is the Cheetah. And you can see this is the one that I've definitely used the most. This champagne shade is very much a Sophia shade. The reason that I have these all the way at the bottom are, number one, they are $54. $54 for an eyeshadow single. I just think that is so extortionately priced. These were the first product that I actually ordered from the brand. And I just remember getting these and thinking, wow, I'm really, really underwhelmed. Like the packaging is pretty plastic. Sticky. It's not weighty. For $54, I would expect something that I would get from like a Westman Atelier or a Victoria Beckham. You guys know I'm always kind of like being very, very critical about the packaging. But the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of times when you buy luxury makeup, you're buying it for the experience and the packaging is a really big part of that. A lot of times you are buying the packaging almost. And with this, I don't know if it, maybe this is more eco-friendly or something like that, but the packaging just doesn't really do it for me. I do like the animals on the front, don't get me wrong. I'm a cat lady and obviously like I bought the two, <laughs> I bought the two cat ones. Some of the other colors are a little bit more interesting than these, but I decided to start off with the animals that I liked in the most basic shades. The other reason that these are ranked last is that I just don't think the formula is that great. You guys probably saw in the clip, like you can see I have a beautiful sheen across my lids but like is this better than any other like shadow that you would get in a luxury palette no like I don't think it's that great I think that if this shadow was included in like a Pat McGrath palette everyone would be like mm, I don't know this one shade is a little bit chunky like I just can't get these to really give a lot of good color payoff and stick to the lid so I don't think that these are awful I just 
wouldn't recommend these as like the number one thing that I would pick up from this brand. Like they're very mediocre. They were a huge disappointment to me. That's just my personal opinion. Personally, I will not be buying more of these. Next up is a product that was limited edition. So I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but they probably will launch more products like this. And I also just wanna sort of comment on the formula in general. And that is this Radiance Chic Cheek and Highlighting Duo. This was something that they launched maybe two years ago. I purchased this alongside the eyeshadows and this was my first impression of Chantecaille and it really wasn't that great. In fact, it took like a whole two years for me to then give the brand another chance. And now I really like the brand. We'll get into some better products, but I just wanna show you guys, this is basically like a baked gelé kind of formula. When I first received this, the pans basically fell out of the packaging. It's the same like plasticky packaging that you get with the eyeshadow singles. I just couldn't believe that something so expensive, I can't remember how much this is, but it was expensive. I couldn't believe how something so expensive, like the pans just completely fell out. And once again, I thought that this packaging was gonna be a lot more weighty. The other thing about this is that this baked gelée formula, I have a lot of baked gelée formulas. I love baked gelée, but I just can't pick up this pigment. You guys will see in the clip, like I am desperately trying to pick up this highlighter. And I know I'm using a squirrel hair brush, which is a little bit softer, but trust me, even if you use like a goat hair brush, I can't pick this up all that much. And I used the squirrel hair so that you could see on kind of like the black bristles that it's really not picking much up like you can see a bit of a sheen there but a lot of this glow is from the base products that we're going to get into so i don't know i would be a little bit hesitant to pick up more of these sort of like cheek like baked gelée kind of stuff in the future all right so next up we have their lip definers these are their lip liners i have these ranked kind of lower because once again these aren't bad i just don't think they are that special i think that what's nice about these i have the shade tone right here i think that's what is nice about these is that they're extremely blendable here you can kind of see how that easily blends out but the downside of that guys is that these are just not very long wearing and this is a personal preference right maybe you want these to glide over your lips especially if you have maybe you know more lines on your lips or maybe more mature skin I'm 31 like my skin is getting older I have very dry skin by the way I will mention that I have very like dry temperamental skin I'm prone to acne I'm prone to eczema so I like things that are super gentle on my skin but I also when it comes to lip liners I I like something that's a little bit more long wearing. So I do enjoy this, especially because it's in kind of a neutral shade. If I just wanna grab this and kind of scribble it all over my lips, it's gonna work really well. But honestly, I don't find myself reaching for this all that much just because I have other lip liners in my collection that work better. I like the Lisa Eldridge, I like the Charlotte Tilbury, and I like the Pat McGrath more than I like these. I also recently reviewed the ones that came out from Rare Beauty. They're only $15, which is half the price of these. And quite honestly, I think that they perform better than these from Chantecaille. So not a bad lip liner. They're nice. They're just like not very long wearing. All right, guys. So next up, uh, I know this is going to upset some people, but hear me out. Hear me out, guys. The next best thing from Chantecaille is their lip veils. If you're not familiar with these, these are basically kind of like a hydrating sheer lip color. You can kind of see this on my hand. Again, I'll put all of the shades down below. These are lovely. They're very hydrating to the lips. I think that these are beautiful. I also really like the packaging of these. You guys can see I have sort of like the limited edition elephant one. They're really nice. It has magnetic closure, all that good stuff. I just think that these are a little bit overpriced for what they are. These are $50, $50. I probably wouldn't recommend getting this unless they are on sale. In fact, I think all of the lip products that I got from Chantecaille were on sale. They do go on sale, especially when you get these limited edition collections, people rush out and buy them. And then later on, they just go on sale or you can get them 25% off in the Sylvie sale that is going on right now. So the reason that these are ranked just a little bit lower is because I just think they're a little bit overpriced and there are a lot of really great, more affordable alternatives. In fact, I will link down below a video that I did kind of like giving speed reviews of all of the new and OG beloved like satin glossy hydrating types of lipsticks that are out on the market. And I gave you guys my thoughts on each one. And in that video, I said the same thing. I said, I think these are really great. I just think they're a little bit overpriced. If I'm not mistaken, I think that these from Chantecaille are the worst value across all of the ones that I have in my collection. Maybe only second to Chanel. So that's why these are ranked a little bit lower, but you guys
guys can see in the demo, it looks beautiful on the lips. Next up, you probably could have guessed it, they are the Lip Cheeks. I actually like these just a little bit more than the Lip Veil because for me, I like a little bit more pigment. I feel like the texture of these is a little bit thicker, like a little bit creamier, and that's something that I enjoy. These are still very expensive. They are $48. I'm a little bit confused though because some of them come in this packaging and some of them come in this packaging. This says Lip Chic, but it's the same packaging as the Lip Sticks, but I'm pretty sure this is a Lip Chic. This is the color that I'm wearing today. It is called Poppy, and then this other one that I have is called Capucine. I think that this was a limited edition one for summer, maybe like two years ago. I kind of feel the same way about these that I do about the lip veils. They're really lovely. They're very beautiful, but I don't think you need like 10 of these. Pick one of them up when they go on sale. Maybe get like a nude one and one bright one, but I don't think that you guys need these in every color. They are very, very expensive, but I do think that they nourish the lips very, very well. Like I think that your lips are going to feel very moisturized, very nourished, but I also think that you can get that with a lot of other glossy lipsticks on the market. So once again, I kind of feel the same about these. Okay, so now we're kind of getting in like the mid tier and you guys will see a big trend in a lot of these products. I like them and I reach for them a lot, but they are very expensive and there might be other better alternatives out there. The next product that I want to talk about is the Future Skin Foundation. I, I'll just say right off the bat, I love Shantikai's base products. They are fantastic. I would say out of the three that I own, we're going to talk about the others in just a second. I would say out of the three that I own, the Cushion Foundation is probably my least favorite favorite, not because it's bad, but mostly just because I think that the other ones are a little bit better. They're a little bit better suited towards my skin type. As I mentioned earlier, I have dry skin and I think that this foundation, it's probably the best one if you want a little bit more of like a matter coverage. It gives probably like a medium coverage and at least on me, it's a little bit more matte. I like more of like a hydrated, natural, sometimes glowy finish. And with this, I just don't find it to be that glowy. It obviously comes with this little cushion right here. I don't like to apply it with the cushion. I get very impatient. I find it a little bit hard to pick up the product in the pan. The way that I like to apply this is with a flat top brush, one that is basically the same size as the little cushion. I just kind of like pounce it in there and then I stamp it onto my skin. So yeah, I feel like this one, it just doesn't wear as well on my skin. And then I think one of the other reasons why I decided to put it a lot lower than a lot of other products, even though it's still good, is because it's a hundred and thirty dollars. This is the most expensive base product that they sell. And so I bought it because I needed to know like, why is it $130? Why is it so, so good? And I know that these products guys, I know that they're infused with skincare and really good skin loving ingredients. But at the end of the day, even if something is good for your skin, if it doesn't wear super well on my skin, or if it's kind of like a pain to apply, then I have to rank it lower. Cause like I said, there's better base products that we're gonna be talking about in just a moment. Okay, next up is a product that I actually have a full video review of on my channel. So if you guys are interested in hearing about this and kind of comparisons, maybe some other cheaper alternatives, then you should definitely check that out. This is the Shantikai Longest Lash Faux Sills Mascara. This is a lovely mascara. You guys will see from the clips, it makes my lashes look so beautiful and fluttery. I think what I really like about this is that it seems like it never really clumps. Like it almost seems like it's moisturizing my lashes. It also is very long wearing. It's almost like a tubing mascara. If you guys have ever used tubing mascaras before, those are my favorite kinds of mascaras. And typically if you're looking for clean beauty, they're usually, I don't know, it must be the way that you formulate mascaras. They are usually a tubing type of mascara. This is great. Like I said, it's very long wearing. It goes on super smooth. You definitely can build it up. I would say the biggest cons of this and why it's just ranked a little bit lower is because number one, it's $74, which is so ungodly expensive. And I don't know about you guys, but I go through mascaras pretty quickly, a lot quicker than 
a lot of other products in my collection. Like the two products that I probably go through the most are mascaras and brow pencils. So this is pretty expensive for one of those types of products that's like highly replenishable. And once again, definitely check out my video because I just think that there are other equivalents to this that are much more affordable, much cheaper, a little bit more long wearing, and I still think that they make my lashes feel good. I know a lot of you guys, you commented on that video and you said, well, this one has like ingredients that are really good for lash care. I totally get that. And I think that if that's something that's really important to you, that's like, you are the person that should be buying this type of mascara. Lastly, I also just wanna mention the brush, I like it, but it's just not my favorite kind of brush. I like that it's thin, but personally for me, I like something that's just a little bit tapered given that this is a lengthening mascara. I like something that is a little bit easier to kind of like get into those little lashes. In fact, when I was <laughs> when I was applying this for this video, I did have to go in and sort of clean up some mess that I made along my eyelids. I do have very long lashes. And so if the brush is a little bit thicker, it's harder for me to kind of be very precise and not make a mess. So that's just my personal preference. But yeah, I really like this. Really, you know, if you are gonna get this, I would try to get it on sale. Next up, we have the Philanthropy Cheek Shade. So I'll show you guys one of the ones that I have here that I haven't used so you can see what these look like when you first get them. This is the turtle one, the sea turtle, and it is called Grace. This color is called Grace. I really like the beautiful nude tone of this. Again, this is one of the ones that I haven't used yet. And I have this one kind of like, mid rank because I think there's like equal pros and cons, right? These retail for $42, which that's expensive, but it's also kind of the same as like a Pat McGrath blush, for example. You're not getting that much product, but with a blush, this is gonna take you forever to go through. Even if you're somebody where you use this every single day, I think that this is a better value than, for example, a $74 mascara, like the one that we just talked about. It is a very beautiful formula. Like it glides across the cheeks really nice. It's a nice blush, but I think I think some of the downsides to this is that number one you get this and it looks so so beautiful but this shiny part right here this is an overspray it's an overspray that is going to basically be gone after you use this one or two times what i would prefer to see from jantakai are maybe like similar styles of products but ones that actually have like a shiny part and a matte part so maybe you can kind of like pick and choose do i want something that's more of a highlighter do i want to swirl it together so that it's a glowy blush and then you you still sort of have that really cute little animal on there to kind of remind you okay there's proceeds of this going towards a charity and maybe you bought this because you really like the animal that was on it like you still kind of have that special element to it because once this turtle goes away there's like nothing that's like that much special about this blush in terms of the experience just like the other products that i was mentioning like there is nothing special about this packaging whatsoever this is extremely cheap and plasticky it looks pretty nice it's just not weighty like there's there's no emblem on the front there's no turtle on the front where is the turtle they're really nice but there's just kind of like equal pros and cons to these blushes. They aren't like the first thing that I would buy from the brand. If you already have a couple of things from Chantecaille that you really like, then maybe consider picking these up. You guys are gonna see there's another type of blush in this ranking video that I like a little bit more than these. Next up, we have the Real Skin Plus Face and Eye Stick, and I have the shade Zero C. I really like this. I feel like I've heard a couple of people say that they don't enjoy this, and I just don't really know why. <laughs> Once again, I I have very dry skin. My eye area in particular is very dry. I get eczema on my eyelids. And so when it comes to base products, I want something that's gonna be very nourishing. I also have pretty dark under eye circles. They're just hereditary. It's kind of like my Mediterranean genetics. And what I like about this is that number one, it's very easy to use. It's very creamy. It's super hydrating. I don't find that it creases and it gives a lot of coverage. Sometimes I go in with moisturizing concealers and they just don't really provide enough coverage. I also like to kind of put this in my purse if I want to do touch-ups throughout the day. I was using this to kind of like touch up around my lip line with a little brush earlier. I think it's fairly comparable to the Clay de Peau stick concealer. I think maybe that one is, I don't know, maybe that one's like just a little bit better. It's hard. It's like pretty negligible, but yeah, you guys can see this looks super hydrating underneath my eyes. I really like this. I think the only reason that I ranked it maybe a little bit lower than some of the other products in this video is because 
there's like some other alternatives out there. This is $62. It's pretty expensive. If you were to use this all over your face, I think you would use it up pretty quickly. The fact that, you know, we have the clay to poke concealer. We have a lot of other great concealers out on the market is, is really just the reason why this isn't like super high top. I think that if you want to be top ranked in this kind of video, especially for products that are this expensive, you need to be something that I really don't have in my collection. But overall, I really, really like this. And I do recommend that you check it out if you're somebody that likes to concealers. Next up we have an eye product. This is the Chantecaille Brightening Eye Kajal. This is a great product. This actually, I think this is one of the first products that I tried from the brand that I really, really like because once again, I tried like the eyeshadows and the big gelé cheek stuff and I wasn't super impressed, but I heard really good things about this. I can't remember from which YouTuber and I gave it a try and I really liked it. One of the reasons why I like this and why it's ranked a little bit higher. First off, it costs $30, which I think is fine, especially Especially since Chantecaille is a luxury brand, but I also think that unlike a lot of other brightening eye pencils that I have from other brands, this one is very special. It glides into the waterline so seamlessly and not only does it go in very easily, but it actually stays. You guys can see like I've been sitting here for a while and I still have this in my waterline. This is really great if you need to look a little bit more awake. You know, maybe you were up late working, maybe you were up late partying, like who knows what you were doing. And maybe you have a Zoom call first thing in the morning, you wanna pop this on. You are gonna be looking so bright eyed and bushy tailed. So I do think this is great. I don't have anything this good that serves this purpose in my collection. You could also use this to kind of brighten up like the inner corner. You could use this to add, you know, we'll do it right here. You could add like a little highlight under the brow bone right there. Just add like a little bit of brightness there. You could use this for so many different types of things. I think it's a really good product. Here's another product that I have a dedicated review for on my channel. This is the Chantecaille Radiance Gel Bronzer. We're getting into the section here of this ranking video where it's like, these are my favorite products from the brand. These are the things that I think that you should check out that you might not have in your collection. I have a lot of makeup guys. So if I don't have anything like this in my collection, it's probably going to be similar for you guys. The reason why I have this ranked up so high is because I think that the formula is really interesting. You guys will see in the demo. This is like it says in the name, it is a gel formula. It's so easy to use. And especially with luxury makeup, I think that those of us that are buying luxury makeup, a lot of us tend to be like a little bit more mature. And especially we are looking for something that is effortless that applies really beautifully, looks super natural. And that's what I think this gives you. You guys will see it in the demo, like it just blends itself. It immediately blends itself. I think that this is great for those of you who have dry skin, but also because it's a gel formula, I think it's great for those of you who have oily skin as well, which I can't really say for a lot of other cream bronzers on the market, because if you have oily skin, you probably know with a cream bronzer, sometimes it's going to like slide off your face. And in that case, I think a gel formula is really, really great. The reason that this isn't ranked even higher than it is right now is because there's only one shade. Like, come on, Shantakai, if you're watching this. You need to come out with more shades. Personally, this shade works well for me, but it does have a very distinct peachiness to it almost. So I think that this works really good if you are my skin tone, if you are sort of neutral to cool pale girl then this is gonna work for you because it is very light. But I just can't rank it any higher because like nobody else can use this and I just don't think that that is great. So I think that we need to add at least two, preferably three more shades to this line. But overall, I do really like this. If you are pale like me, then I think this might be good for you. Next up is a similar product. These are the Cheek Gelays. It's really, for the most part, the same formula as the Radiance Gel Bronzer, except that these are blushes. And the reason that these are ranked a little bit higher is because because number one, I think these are a better value because you don't have to use as much, but also like they come in more shades. Unlike the bronzer, which is really only accessible to a certain percentage of us here that are buying from Chantecaille, the nice thing about the cheek gelés is that they come in more shades. So more of us can use them, more of us can enjoy this formula, but it's the same situation with the bronzer. Like these blend themselves out. And I do think that if you're choosing between these blushes and the philanthropy like powder blushes, I do recommend that you try these 
first because chances are if you're watching this video you probably already have powder blushes in your collection but you might not have gelé blushes in your collection so in that case i do recommend that you try these out first and it's a good value like this is gonna last you a lifetime even if you were to use it every single day Alrighty, friends we have reached the top two products that i personally like from Shantakai. So in the second place, we have the Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer. I am not really like a tinted moisturizer girl, but when I tried this, I fell in love. I think I also got this in like a sale at some department store. I can't remember. I might've gotten it from Skin Store, one of the Skin Store sales. Skin Store is a really great place if you wanna find Shantakai on sale, by the way, kind of throughout the year outside the Sylvie sale, so I'll just mention that. I use the shade Alabaster. I'm pretty much always Alabaster in most of their face products. That color seems to work well for me. And what I like about this is that it's just so simple. I can apply it with my fingers. You guys will see it gives like a decent amount of coverage. It is a tinted moisturizer though. It's a tinted moisturizer. It's not gonna look like a foundation, but it just looks so incredibly natural. And especially if you pair this with the Just Skin eye and face stick, then you have a match made in heaven because you can kind of conceal up the bits of your face that maybe need a little bit more coverage. And then you can go in with this and you can have that no makeup makeup look. And I think the key to this as well, guys, is that Shantakai, their products, they are really good for your skin. I actually don't have like any skincare from Shantakai. That is actually what I'm going to be trying next. That's what I'm going to be picking up in the Sylvie sale. But when you try their base products, they really do feel like skincare. Like the the texture is fantastic. When I put this on, I feel like I'm putting on a really nourishing face moisturizer. And that's what I really like about this is the fact that I can put it on, especially if my skin isn't doing so well and I don't feel like putting on makeup. This is what I go for. It's a fantastic tinted moisturizer. I like to apply it with my fingers. You get 1.7 ounces. So I think that's a pretty good amount of product. Usually one ounce is kind of like the standard if you're getting a foundation. So they're giving you more here because it's a tinted moisturizer. I can't recommend this enough. I really like it. I really don't use any other tinted moisturizer from any other brand. Okay, so in the number one spot, I don't think any of you guys are gonna be surprised by this if you watch my channel. You know that this product is like absolute holy grail for me. This is what I have all over my face today and it is the Shantakai Future Skin Foundation. If you haven't tried anything from the brand, you need to try this foundation. Apparently this is what they use in the Euphoria set. I don't watch that show. I didn't know anything about this. I just tried this on my own accord and I absolutely fell in love with it. If you guys want a detailed review of this product, I do have a review of it on my channel with obviously like daylight application, wear tests. I go in depth about kind of the ingredients, how it's good for your skin, just like all the details that you need for this foundation. I do comparisons and all that good stuff. So I will link that video down below. In summary, this is just like the best foundation ever. It has kind of like what I like to call a pudding consistency. It's very moisturizing, but it also is somewhat gel-like, which is kind of weird. If you guys have ever eaten one of those snack pack pudding cups, it's kind of like that consistency. I know that sounds weird, but honestly, that's what the consistency is like. I brush this onto my skin. It feels so like, cooling and soothing. I like to describe it as a hug for my skin. This is what's going to give you that like translucent, perfect glass skin kind of look. If you have dry skin like me, this is going to be a dry skin person's dream. But I also think that this is good for people with oilier skin because it has that sort of gel like consistency, like somehow they've managed to make something that's both like really nourishing and moisturizing to your skin, but also doesn't make your skin oily or greasy at all. It's extremely lightweight. And what I said in my review of this product is that even though it's very lightweight, they still have managed to get a lot of pigment into the formula. Like when you brush it onto your skin, you'll see right here, like my skin looks perfect. Like you can't see any blemish on my face and yet this feels extremely lightweight. It also wears really well. I don't feel like even in the dead of winter. That's like that that is the true test for me because I live in Boston. It gets 
hella dry here, okay? And it doesn't get crusty. It always looks good. It nourishes my skin. When my skin is doing really bad, when I'm struggling, this is what I reach for. Whenever I'm filming demos for videos for you guys, if I'm trying on 10 different cheek colors or five different lip products, anything like that where I'm having to like put on makeup, wipe it off, put makeup on again for my reviews. Like this is what I go in with. My skin doesn't get irritated. Once again, I use the shade Alabaster. This is Holy Grail, one of my top three foundations in my collection. I highly recommend you try it. And one of the reasons why also this is ranked higher than the other two products, the Tinted Moisturizer and the Cushion Foundation is just because like, I think that this is a better value than the Cushion Foundation first off. And I think that this gives similar benefits to the Tinted Moisturizer, but it gives more coverage. And to me, a more like perfecting luminous finish. So that's all of my thoughts. I didn't even have to think twice. Like I knew that this was going to be number one from Shantikai, at least for me. Anyway, guys, I hope that you liked this ranking video. Comment down below and let me know what you think of the way that I ranked everything. Does all of my logic make sense to you? I would love to hear from you guys. I know a lot of these products are very, very popular with my channel. So sound off down below and let me know what your experience is. How would you rank all of these? What are your favorite products from Shantikai? And if you like this video, don't forget to give your girl here a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Because we have so, so much fun over here. Hit that subscribe button to join the fam. Also, I will include my Instagram handle up here. That is the best place to connect with me on the reg. That's when I let you know when products like this for Shantikai and other luxury brands, when they go on sale, when there's new product releases, and also just kind of like what I'm up to, things that I'm buying, things that are coming up. So definitely head on over to Instagram and connect with me over there. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.